Hi everyone. Um, I've been meaning uh, for a few days to, um, to produce a video that uh, demonstrates sort of briefly how to use the FDM Duo um, on its own without a computer. The reason I bought this radio is because I wanted a full-blown SDR, but at the same time, you know, many of you will know that I prefer to use a radio, uh, or at least have the option of using a radio in the traditional sense with a panel. And um, this is really the only radio available right now that allows you to do both. It's a full-blown SDR, but can you be used independently? Um, and what I thought I would do was just briefly run through the sort of various options with the controls uh, on the front panel. Um, it's the ergonomics are okay. It's not as good as using a full-blown tabletop receiver where you fundamentally have one function per pot or button or whatever. So there's very few actual controls on the front panel of the radio and I'm just going to run through the main ones. Um, but the bottom line is that for, for someone like me who wants uh, a good receiver that, uh, that you can use uh, in SDR mode but at the same time just use as a traditional receiver this is the compromise I've, I have to live with and really the only compromise because um, you know at the end of the day you know, I have other radios but um, I just wanted to be able to do both. Um, what I've also done is I've actually connected um, a better set of speakers so what we actually have here um, are some sort of pretty good quality uh, Sony computer speakers uh, they're the tweeters and there but there is actually a separate uh, subwoofer um, because again you know the sound of this radio quality compared to something like my FRG 8800 you know well there's no comparison but I'm tuned uh, now to uh, 15 610 on 19 meters um, and it sounds pretty good now. So it's a lot better than just using the speaker inside the unit itself. Um, it's a much fuller sound, um, which is better um, and necessary really when you're used to uh, the FRG8800 which is one of the nicest sounding receivers out there um, this was definitely something that I was intending to do um, I had the speakers anyway um, it could probably benefit actually from a, actually an even better quality external speaker or speakers but um, for now you know this setup is a big improvement um, and will do so at the moment, I'm tuned to uh, uh, 15, 6, 10 on 19 meters. And just very briefly, so the volume control here, uh, pretty obvious. Um, and then the control underneath, E2, is actually, has again, a number of um, uses. But, but primarily, the first one is the filter width. So just by turning this without doing anything else, you can adjust the filter from... 6,000 hertz down to 2,500. So that's 2.5 kilohertz. 3, 3.5, 4, so it goes up in 500 hertz increments. It wouldn't surprise me if there was a way of actually adjusting the um, the increments, the 500 hertz increments, but um, but that's the option that you get. So E2 control, the, the primary function is, is the filter width, but if you press that button, then you have a CW pitch option. Um, and then if you turn it again, you can so you can adjust adjust the CW pitch. Press it again and receive independent transmit off on option don't need that and then back to filter so for my purposes right now that uh pot has only well that's it's the switch really has only one function which is to adjust the um filter width right so e1 which the primary function is volume um if you press that then you've got squelch squelch on 
and then the actual squelch level and if you turn it back in the other way it switches it off press the button again and then you've got the automatic game control which is off so switch that on so that's basically on off so if i switch it on uh, it's then set to slow medium or fast so let's press it for medium noise reduction off or on and that actually works really well so there, that's noise reduction off it's pretty noisy and so we set it halfway you can see it works quite well noise blanking off and you can switch that on as well I'm gonna leave that off for now press again uh, I don't even know what that is. Um, AM, I'm not even sure what that is. But anyway, back to volume. So, um, as you can see, so there's multiple, multiple functions on one pot. But I've been using it for a few days now, and um, it's, it's actually, you get used to it pretty quickly. Um, as soon as you turn the tuning wheel, then the, the display defaults back to the tuned frequency. So, and you can tune it this way. So, um, I think what we'll do, so to change band, or there aren't really, there isn't effectively a band selector, there's memories that you can set up to get you to another band, but it's actually really quick. So what you do is you press the tuning wheel in. If you do it quickly, then you can adjust the steps, the tuning steps and it, so one, Hertz. I mean, it's amazing. The tuning steps go from one hertz to kilohertz, basically. So I tend to use either 500 hertz or a thousand hertz. Let's use a thousand hertz. Press it again, and it's done. If you press it and hold it, then this is the tuning option, and this is the fastest way. So you can basically you can cursor this by using the E1 control. But if you leave it there uh, and then turn the tuning wheel, for example, if we wanted to go to say 22 meters, 13.5. We can literally, oh, to press it again, hold it. We can just turn this down and you can see how quickly you can move up and down. So if we, there we go, 12, 13, so 13.592, press it again. And you're at the start then of the 22 meter band. And then turn the tuning wheel. So tuning actually is, is actually pretty good. It's, it's pretty fast. Um, you can move up and down the bands incredibly quickly um, using that simple method. Let's see if we can find something. Uh, Saudi. I'm going to go back here. See if the, uh, so, so there we have it. Just the filter. So that's the tuning. Um, the other way you can tune it, of course, is you can press and hold the uh, tuning wheel down, and then you can literally scroll across and input each uh, digit by turning this wheel. Um, but so you have a lot of control but the quickest way is to um, is, is to do it the way that I showed you so um, so that's tuning um, Vatican radio the banger but actually that's coming from Santa Maria de Galleria so, so anyway so that's basically it so um so 
I hope that was interesting. Um, as I said, it's. I've done a few tests already. It seems to be a very sensitive receiver. Um, yet the ergonomics aren't quite as straightforward um, as using something like the ASU. But there are far more options in terms of conditioning the signal with this radio, and it's going to take a bit of time to kind of get to uh, get to understand and use all the features and um, for optimizing reception. Um, it's incredibly sophisticated, um, but. What I like about this is that it's um, you know it's a radio that you can use in the in the traditional sense, um, but at the same time it's a full blown SDR, um, and so you basically get the best of both worlds. Um, Yeah, um, and so I've been using this now as a traditional receiver, um, just going through some of the sort of basic controls. I guess the other thing is mode, obviously, it's got AM, lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, FM, and that's just the press of a button, so that's quite easy. Yeah, so this is using it as a, as a sort of standard receiver. Um, but whilst I've been doing this, um, and you, I've had the computer connected to it, and so this is the beauty of it is that while you're tuning through and using it as a standard radio at the same time if you want you can actually be looking at the signal now I, did, I think I mentioned this before but I'm using it independently as a radio but if I want as I turn the tuning wheel now you know I can actually view a spectrum and that's great um, and so as some of you know I'm interested in medium wave uh, transatlantic DXing or medium wave DXing. Um, Mateus helps me um, get started with that. Um, one of the things with medium wave DXing is, is of course being able to look at you know um, transatlantic uh, carriers and so here obviously it's something that can be done with uh, with ease just switch the radio on and tune it to whichever 1610 or whatever um, 1010 kilohertz and, and wait so so it's very uh, sort of flexible setup. Um, you can use it as a traditional radio, but at the same time have the computer connected uh, and view a spectrum in the way that you would simply by using a computer with the, and the radio as, a, as an SDR. So I hope that was useful uh, or at least interesting. Um, I'm going to spend a bit more time getting familiar with it. Um, and hopefully at some point um, produce some interesting DX reception videos. Um, but in the meantime, uh, thank you very much for watching.